best in class organizations treat their customers, employees, leaders, and vendors. Leaders and vendors a lot of times get left out of the mix. It's always let's focus on the customer, let's focus on the employee. I believe it takes an entire family of employees uh, to, to, make, to make the company successful. And a lot of times the leaders and vendors get left out. So I believe that they always treat their customers, employees, leaders, and vendors with respect, kindness, and gratitude. Hello and welcome to another series of the Leaders Hum interview series. Uh, this is your host, Nayan Jadeja from the People Hum team. Just a quick introduction of People Hum. Uh, it is an end-to-end, one-view, integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that is specifically built and crafted for employee experiences, and the future of work with AI and automation technologies. Uh, we run the People Hum blog and a video channel specifically targeting leaders and young leaders uh, through our Leaders Hum series. Uh, it's with great pleasure that I wanted to welcome our guest, Jeffrey McNulty, um, to the program today. Jeffrey is the founder and CEO of New Retail Ethos. Um, which assists retailers and businesses with alleviating and addressing common pain points through all facets of customer insights, uh, anticipatory intelligence, and retail research. Um, Jeff is considered a hybrid in the business world as he has over 30 years as an executive leader for several very well-known brands uh, like the Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, uh, Shopco and Toys R Us to name a few uh, and he also has over 15 years as a retail analyst so Jeff welcome to the program thank you for having me I really want to thank uh, uh, the entire people home organization for this opportunity um, when uh, I think it was a Nijai Nishai reached out to me I was definitely uh, excited uh, the book is doing very well in India by the way so I I'm really happy with the, uh, the presence over there with that we have Fantastic engagement from uh, all the uh, the people in India that engage with me on LinkedIn. So, uh, yeah, I spent 30 years in the retail sector <clears throat> as an executive leader, as you said, with the Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Shopco, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, Toys R Us, Publix, and Festival Foods. And then, of course, 15 years as a ret retail analyst. Um, I founded New Retail Ethos in 2018 in order to provide advisory consulting services to retail and business leaders. We basically provide a structured blueprint that assists clients with achieving sustained success through our proprietary program. New Retail Ethos provides a, I call it a comprehensive assessment, which encompasses all 10 pillars contained within the book, uh, the Ultimate Retail Man Manual. And uh, we provide tangible and actionable solutions. So we've consulted with small, medium, and large uh, retail operators here in the United States, a few uh, globally as well. As founder and CEO, I thoroughly enjoy being hands-on uh, with our clients by providing a personalized experience that I'm extremely proud of. That's one thing that I really make sure that we do. We're hands-on. Uh, we, we communicate with the clients. I like to be on site as much as possible, uh, time permitting, of course. Um, we complete, uh, uh, complete client satisfaction as our number one priority. And you can visit our website at newretailethos.com. Awesome. Great. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks to, you know, for sharing that. Um, my, my question, I guess, you know, you talked about the book, uh, the ultimate retail manual. Um, and you know, the fact that it's doing good, I think uh, it would be great if you could share some of your insights with our audience, um, in terms of, you know, what, what, what you are trying to kind of convey through the book. Absolutely. My purpose for writing the manual was to share the knowledge that I gleaned throughout my 30 year career within the retail sector uh, with others. The ultimate retail manual was uh, a labor of love. Basically I've always wanted to read uh, one retail book that contained a culmination of best practices and proven strategies that would provide a blueprint for achieving long-term success. Uh, the phrase that kept coming to my mind, I've read a, a plethora of leadership books, a lot of retail books was uh, if you can't, uh, find the book that you're looking for created. So that's kind of what I did. So I basically created the ultimate retail manual. Uh, when I first became a, a retail leader in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, I was a I'm a voracious reader, so I was reading a lot of books. 
and I wanted one book that contained everything that I was looking for. So there was a lot of books on leadership, uh, human resources, merchandising, revenue generation, et cetera. But I wanted one book that contained it all. And so I created a hands-on retail manual that was written from an empirical result standpoint, um, as opposed to a, a theoretical ideas perspective. Uh, in other words, verifiable and proven results versus <clears throat> a conceptual idea. So the manual contains a 10 pillar strategy that is transformative, highly portable and reproducible while being fantastically successful at producing sustained retail and business success. The key is executing it consistently. That's the key actuator for achieving maximum results is consistency. The people that read the, the leaders that read the book from cover to cover and they implement all 10 pillars within their store, their district, uh, their region, their company, uh, achieve fantastic results across the board. So when an organization has all stores operating from um, an identical mindset, the results will be, remain consistent with that level of energy. Um, in some of the retailers I worked for, um, by the way, very, very great retailers, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, fantastic operators. Um, there's some stores uh, that operate kind of on their own agenda and they're not a part of the program. You can't really have those outliers in today's retail climate, you need to have every store uh, in every region and every district operating on the same level. So um, the manual has an international presence with readers. Uh, I think it's up to 17 different countries around the world now. It's doing really well. India, like I said, was a, is a big, big market force. Uh, fantastic engagement from all the readers over there. And uh, they're heavily involved in LinkedIn as well. So I'm very proud of, uh, of that accomplishment. Oh, so cool. in the manual, there's, uh, there's basically, uh, I, I try to point out like 16 different bullet points that you're going to mm -hmm. learn. So it's how to properly conduct the interview in an entire interview process, how to effectively promote your brand, how to ensure that your onboarding process is first class. And this is becoming extremely critical now with, uh, with how hard it is to procure top tier talent in the retail sector, um, how to conduct an optimal performance review. Performance reviews are very, very uh, uh, important to employee growth, uh, purpose, and, and feeling valued and respected, how to eradicate revenue deterrence, uh, net income techniques to increase profitability, how to implement successful revenue, revenue generation strategies, how to promote the right leaders. This one is huge. Uh, I devote a lot of time in the book to this. This is crucial as uh, it, promoting the right leaders, they represent your brand, they represent your culture and values of the company. So it's very important to promote the right leaders. Uh, the, the concept that I always discuss is you can always teach a lot of the pragmatic uh, uh, results that you need from the leaders, but they have to have the, the genuine concern for people. I always promoted leaders that, that had a great attitude, that enjoyed helping others, that were uh, approachable, and wanted to help others. That's the key. Merchandising concepts that increase revenue, um, store environment, best practices that generate what I call harmonious energy. For your customers and employees, I discuss a lot the concept of feng shui in the book, how you can create your store environment to have a harmonious environment instead of a chaotic energy, how to create massive differentiation, um, the five anchors, the five main anchors to achieve an exemplary organizational culture, omni-channel strategies that ensure a seamless and positive guest experience, how to create work-life balance for your leaders. This is becoming very, very important to leaders that I speak to and retail uh, around the country in the United States, uh, leaders around the world, but mostly in the United States, that they're looking for more work-life balance in their life. Um, they work in 55, 60, 70 hours a week year-round, and they want to spend some more time with their family, you know, going to the kids' soccer game, being able to focus on their passions and hobbies. And I believe there is a balance that can be achieved. Uh, there's a lot of retailers that are doing it very well. Um, so that's something that I'm looking forward to seeing more retailers do. And lastly, innovative concepts that will capture market share and why the retail apocalypse is hyperbole. So these are some of the main characteristics and concepts that I discuss uh, throughout the manual. Great. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot uh, for sharing that with our audience. I'm sure people who are, you know, um, not only in the retail sector, I mean, I think a lot of the concepts that you've talked about are real world problems, you know, outside of retail as well. So I'm sure... Uh, there will be some amongst that in the audience who would love to, you know, kind of catch up on the manual and learn from it. So 
Um, well, if people can't see the book, here it is. It's, it's behind me. I got like 100 different copies behind me, but here's the book right here. It's a big eight and a half by 11 book. Uh, it's 370 pages. It's uh, chock full of good information. So just wanted to show that in case some people could maybe see yeah. all the books behind me. Awesome. Cool. All right, Jeff. Um, the next. Um, so according to you, what are some of the you know, secret <clears throat> success recipes um, when it comes down to, you know, building and establishing a brand for, for any organization? It's a fantastic question. Uh, we've entered a new retail ethos is what I like to call it. That's why I named my company retail, new retail ethos. We've actually entered into a new energy of conducting business and commerce in the retail sector. I staunchly believe that you must constantly nourish your brand. By truly living your culture, convictions, values every day, by always acting from a place of integrity, honesty, transparency, and authenticity. Uh, a phrase that really sticks with me is a fish stinks from the head down. I know it's a, a fishing term, but it all starts at the top in any organization. Best in class organizations treat their customers, employees, leaders, and vendors. Leaders and vendors a lot of times get left out of the mix. It's always let's focus on the customer, let's focus on the employee. I believe it takes an entire family of employees uh, to, to, make, to make the company successful. And a lot of times the leaders and vendors get left out. So I believe that they always treat their customers, employees, leaders, and vendors with respect, kindness, and gratitude. In essence, they welcome everyone into their family. Actions will always speak louder than words. So the top tier brands that are hyper-focused on improving uh, innovation, uh, sustainability, technology, employee training, uh, employee recognition, uh, guest experience, community engagement, and doing the right thing. So changing consumer preferences have uh, altered, basically altered the re retail landscape. Consumers are demanding much more now from their brands because of the multitude of choices available to them. So I speak extensively about my CAPED acronym, which I created to provide retailers and clients with a strategic blueprint for achieving sustained retail success, even during tumultuous periods. It stands for customize, adapt, personalize, engage, and differentiate. The differentiation piece is what separates you from your competition. This is the one where the top tier retailers are starting to pull away from the, the crowd by creating massive differentiation. Um, what do you wanna be known for? Is it exclusivity, uh, bespoke products, price, quality, sustainability, or selection. You can choose more than one strategy to go after, of course. However, the key differentiator is which strategies you select. You gotta, gotta make sure that you're gonna be able to deliver and dominate uh, within those, uh, those niches. So one of the major pitfalls that befall many businesses, not all, there's a lot of businesses that are doing very well with this, is that they attempt to be great at everything. But this type of thinking is planning, this type of thinking and planning is short-sighted. Basically, because of the massive investment of energy, time, resources that are required to be the best at everything. So no retailer or business can dominate all categories. Organizations that excel truly listen to their customers, employees, leaders intently. The key word there being intently because they are the ones who are in the stores and are ground engaged. I remember when I was in the stores and running districts, you really want to know what's going on with your company talk to the associates, employees that are ground engaged, talk to the customers and talk to the leaders running those stores and districts because they're really in tune with the customers. They know what's going on. The employees will tell you what's happening. So treat all of your employees, customers and leaders and vendors with respect, empathy and kindness at all times. So what I like to say is your brand is a, a living and breathing entity that requires constant attention to safeguard against energy that would be, uh, what's a good word, incongruent with your culture, your values, and your purpose. Great. Yeah, that's, a, that's some good insight on brands for sure. Um, so we've heard that, you know, your core structured program that you've created encompasses the, you know, kind of like a 10 pillar strategy, so to say, and it has been applied to many retail sectors. Could you speak about some of them? Absolutely. Um, the only one I wasn't able to apply the 10 pillar uh, strategy to would be Publix. That was the first retailer that I started uh, back in uh, 1982. 
I was still developing some of the pillars. But uh, once, I, once I was at Home Depot, I was there for 13 years, I developed the majority of the 10 pillar system uh, at Home Depot. So from that point, I, I implemented all the 10 pillar strategies at Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Shopco, Barnes and Noble, PetSmart, Toys R Us, and then lastly at Festival Foods throughout my tenure in the retail sector. The 10 pillar strategies were extremely effective regardless of product assortment, uh, annual sales volume, seasonality, company niche, or store district location. That was the one thing that I learned uh, most intently was that no matter where the store was located, these, these 10 pillars were successful. So I knew I was onto something that was very, very productive uh, and that produced re good results. So the retail concepts are a series of uh, compounding strategies mm. that create an overall advantageous, what I like to call a synergistic effect, which generate effectual momentum analogous to the flywheel effect. So furthermore, this establishes a virtuous cycle or a positive feedback loop. The 10 pillar strategies are an enduring blueprint that produce favorable and dependable results when executed, and here's the key, collaboratively, simultaneously, and consistently. So the whole key to the book is if you read it, you apply the pillars consistently, you're going you're gonna to get great results. And I personally lived each pillar so I can vouch for their efficacy. So I will always be a positive voice, uh, an advocate for the entire retail sector. I love everything about retail. And right now I have the, I've always had, but right now specifically, I have the utmost respect and admiration for all retail employees and leaders for the unprecedented challenges they're having to overcome to remain competitive. It's, it's, it's hard right now to be in retail. It's hard enough to be in retail to begin with, with the nights, the scheduling, the hours, uh, the physical labor, the demands of the job to begin with. But now you throw the pandemic in there. And when I walk into the stores, I'm always thanking the employees and the leaders for what they're doing. Um, they're doing a great service for, for everywhere around the world. And a lot of times they're unappreciated and uh, they're not valued. So uh, a simple thank you, uh, giving them a little bit more time and empathy and patience, you know, when they're, when they're trying to help you because they got so much going on. So uh, I really have a lot of respect for everybody in retail right now. Oh, I see. Great. And just, just to lead on, since you talked of the pandemic, which obviously is kind of top of mind for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, would you be able to share some of the experiences in terms of how you've seen the industry pre and post and how leaders can change given, you know, trying to tackle the pandemic situation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a pre-pandemic retail environment basically had retailers slowly adjusting and acclimating to the new retail ethos. They were taking their time and they a lot of retailers probably could at that point because it wasn't... Uh, we didn't have the pandemic yet, obviously. Many legacy retailers still didn't have a robust omni-channel experience, curbside pickup, uh, or a buy online pickup in store option. We were severely over-retailed, uh, in my opinion, and did not require as many brick and mortar stores due to the increase in e-commerce. E-commerce really changed a lot of the retail landscape. Uh, this energy has been building for decades, and the retailers who have been proactive while embracing innovation have been highly successful navigating this, uh, this changing environment. So think of the best in class retailers like Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, Costco, Tractor Supply is one, an up and coming company that's doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. These top tier retailers are able to, what's the word, prognosticate the future by seeing around the bend. They truly understand how consumer shopping patterns are trending and they're investing the necessary resources to be first in line to execute innovative strategies. <clears throat> a lot of retailers before, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of retailers before the pandemic were waiting for everyone else to kind of kind of work out the, uh, the kinks. They were letting other retailers go through the growing pains and then they wanted to kind of hop on board and off the momentum that a lot of these retailers have already generated and jump in and start running at full speed and it doesn't really work that way in retail. In retail, it's, it's you know, one foot in front of the other, it takes time and you really need to be investing so that the retailers that were first in line are the ones that are probably doing it the best right now. And then as far as post-pandemic, um, I've always believed in silver linings in any situation. Um, the, the pandemic propelled the retail sector forward probably three to five years because retailers were forced to accelerate and improve their digital strategies, uh, omni-channel efforts, supply chain, uh, guest experience. 
while contending, contending with numerous uh, consumer safety protocols. Again, this is unprecedented. Furthermore, most retailers massively increase their efforts to recognize and reward the hard work and frontline employees through bonuses, uh, hero pay, increased time off, and enhanced healthcare benefits. This is one of the things that I really loved seeing, like we talked about just recently, uh, a lot of retail employees and leaders, they're, they're not recognized and rewarded. They're paid a good salary, the leaders are paid a good salary. You know, they get some bonuses and stock options. Uh, and the employees are the ones literally doing the hands-on work, helping the customers. Uh, they usually don't make as much uh, in salary and they're not usually recognized and rewarded. So I was really excited to see these retailers like Lowe's, for example, committed uh, seven different employee recognition bonuses throughout this pandemic, seven different times. Home Depot's done great, Target, Walmart, uh, Best Buy, Costco. Um, a lot of these retailers have really stepped up and said, hey, you know what, we really appreciate what you do. Let us show you by recognizing and rewarding you. Uh, many premium brands uh, are reducing their wholesale, part wholesale partnerships in favor of increasing their uh, direct-to-consumer or DTC sales. So think of Nike which is pulling out of uh, DSW, um, Urban Outfitters, and I believe Macy's. And then you have digitally native brands like Casper, Untuck It, Glossier, Warby Parker, and Allbirds are all realizing that to fully create an experiential guest experience, they're going to need a healthy brick and mortar presence. So in, in my, my opinion, retail leaders have a golden opportunity right now to uh, reimagine the guest experience by becoming trailblazers while implementing innovative technologies, uh, continue to invest in their employees, stores, and communities, and executing my CAPE strategy. So the universe, just like the retail sector, is fundamentally a concept of uh, duality, where each environment seeks to kind of correct itself through adaptation to acclimatize to its intended balanced nature. So through this recorrection, as I would call it, the retail sector is readjusting to the changing retail climate. We're going through a retail evolutionary stage that will lead to homeostasis. Hmm. Okay, Jeff. Uh, lastly, um, do you happen to have uh, a quote that would kind of best describe your feelings towards, you know, what's coming mm -hmm. in terms of the future of work, the future of the workplace, or you? Well, how long is the show? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you... I got a lot of... Hey, my wife always says, you got a lot of quotes that you, you throw around, a lot, a lot of acronyms and quotes. Um, trying to think of one that would kind of summarize it the best. Um, I've created numerous, I call them axioms, throughout my tenure in the retail sector. And these axioms created uh, mental anchors that ensured my intentions were honorable and true at all times. So I guess one of my favorite axioms would probably be uh, an even exchange of energy. I believe this phrase is congruent with how the universe is always seeking balance. Best in class retailers uh, and businesses are always searching for ways to show their customers that they truly appreciate the loyalty patronage, while concurrently creating an environment where employees, leaders, and vendors feel valued, trusted, and respected for their efforts. So our future work environment is going to be, what's a great phrase for this, a symbiotic partnership of human engagement, purpose, and technology. Remote working options are the wave of the future. Obviously, I really enjoy seeing this right now. I used to ask this, this question probably 20 years ago. <clears throat> Um, couldn't a lot of this work be done remotely uh, with, as technology increased? And uh, we're starting to see the, uh, uh, the fruits of that labor happening right now with people being able to work from anywhere, uh, realistically, uh, with, with the, uh, the technology of Zoom now and the internet strength that we have. Uh, a lot of jobs can be, uh, you know, done remotely. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of that. Uh, creates more work-life balance for people, less travel, uh, and then they're happier doing their jobs if they're, if they're given full autonomy. Uh, I have a connection on LinkedIn named Harry Flaris, and uh, he, he, he's operated a remote working team for, for decades, mm. and he always shares on LinkedIn the best practices, what you have when you have a remote working team, and the key is always going to be autonomy and trust. So uh, another seminal moment from the pandemic, 
uh, is the massive increase of organizations that are actively embracing the remote working options uh, for their employees. So I even discussed how in the ultimate retail manual, how the retail sector can implement a uh, hybrid, hybridized version mm. of remote working, which is mutually beneficial for customers and employees. So that would probably be the one that I would say the most an even exchange of energy. I think when, when you read it and you break it down, <clears throat> it's a belief in uh, whatever energy I receive, I make sure I reciprocate in kind. Uh, and I usually over reciprocate, I believe in uh, giving the, the, the customer, the, the clients uh, above and beyond uh, their expectations to, to exceed their expectations. So I think it's something that, uh, that, that catches on. It's, it's, a, it's a mentality or a mindset that, you know, I'm going to give what I, what I give. I'm going to give what I receive. I'm going to be fair with others. I'm going to treat others with kindness, uh, empathy, respect. And I really believe that it, it changes people uh, when you have that mentality. And that, uh, so that's, that's probably one of my favorite axioms and even exchange of energy. Right. Great. Well, um, thanks. Thank you very much, Jeff, uh, for sharing your insights. And I'm sure based on this talk, uh, you know, there's tons of, great nuggets of information in the ultimate retail manual. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of our audience is going to go out there and seek that knowledge from the book. So thank you for uh, sharing with us, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your, your insights and spending the time with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be on. Uh, if you need any uh, uh, continued follow-up, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to be on, uh, on your, your program again. Uh, very happy to help out people home any way I can. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jeff.